Welcome to this tutorial on shape file handling with Python. In this tutorial, I will assume that you know that the shape file is a geospatial vector data that involves either points, polylines, and or polygons. For visualizing shape files, you also um, want to use some JS software such as QJS and you can learn more about using QJS in the QJS tutorial here. Now for working with shape files here in Python, I will use the gdal library that requires to be installed in your environment. If you are working like me here in a Conda environment on Windows, you might need to add your um, environment to your uh, Jupyter kernels so that it can then also recognize your GDAL installation. For more information, please refer here to the website. So that's hydroinformatics.com. You will find here in the software resources section one subsection that is on Python installation. Um, here for the Conda environment on uh, Windows, find here a little hint here how you can add a um, IPython kernel to your environment, uh, from your environment, that you can then use with your uh, Jupyter lab. If you're not using here Fluss tools or Fluss environment, in the troubleshooting section here, you'll find more general hints on implementing I, uh, Py kernels, uh, I Python kernels here um, in uh, the so troubleshooting debugging Jupyter section and then here at the bottom um, there are instructions for installing the IPy kernel in a Conda environment. That will also work if you're using a virtual environment. So the thing where I would write a source and so on for activating it. Good, let's get started. The first thing that we need to do for working with uh, shapefile in, and gdal in Python, we need to import the OGR library from OSGeo. Please note here that the installation of gdal will make available the OSGeo library. So formally, you, formally, or if you're just using your favorite search engine for importing uh, gdal functions, you will maybe see something like here from gdal import OGR or something like that. Um, that's deprecated. What we want to do is from OSGeo import OGR. So that's important here. Good. Once we have here now our OGR library available in our code block, then we can activate here the driver for working with shapefiles. And then we can just open a shapefile dataset. Here I'm opening a dataset that I'm providing here with the course repository data. So if you download them, they are here in the geodata shapefiles subdirectory, and here you find that shapefile. Now for working with a shapefile or for doing something or recognizing that, I'm loading the shapefile layer here with the get layer function or method from the uh, shapefile dataset. So just remember here the routine is first get the driver, then use the driver to open the shapefile that you want and then get the layer with which you want to work here in your shapefile. Now you have seen how to load an existing shapefile in Python. Let's have a look at how you can create a new shapefile. If you didn't run the above code block for importing OGR, you will still need to write here again from OSGeo import OGR. And then I will also use here the OS package. So I'm also importing that. To ease and facilitate shapefile creations, I wrote a little function here that I call create underscore shape that takes the directory and the name of a shapefile 
an overwrite argument and a bunch of uh, optional arguments and keyword arguments to which I will come in just a couple of minutes. So the overwrite argument will make that the shapefile, if it exists already, will be overwritten. This is the default keyword for the creation of a shape file that works here with a shapefile driver that we have just seen and its create data source routine. So in this function, I will have here then the optional keyword arguments um, of a layer name, so a layer that I want to create, and a layer type. The layer type can then be a point layer, a line layer, or a polygon layer. So according to the types of shape files that we can create. If we don't provide any layer name, it will just uh, create an, it will just not create a layer. Um, one hint here for the layer, uh, for the uh, shape file name itself, it should not be longer than 13 characters because that might crash on some older versions. So this function here first retrieves again the driver that we will always need. Then it will over it will delete first the existing shapefile if it exists. So we're using here shapefile.driver delete data source of the shapefile directory for the reason that a shapefile is not only one .shp file, but you may rem remember there's also that .shx file, the .dbf file for the database, and the projection file. So now we have a clear way here to go, and we can create or recreate the shape file. Now I want to add a layer to that shape file that can then be either a point, a line, or a polygon shape file. And the way how I'm doing that here is I'm defining a geometry dictionary that makes reference to the OGR uh, well-known binary point, well-known binary multi-line string, or well-known um, multi-polygon. So this WK here means well-known. Well-known. So if one of these keyword arguments was provided, then I will try here in that try accept statement to create this layer and add it to my uh, shapefile. So I'm using here the new shapefile and its create layer method. Then I am trying here to get the layer name that we might have provided here to the, uh, to the function. Um, and then I am adding here as a geom type keyword argument from the geometry dictionary, the layer type. So I'm just using here that uh, dot lower uh, function of the string type, just to make sure that if someone wrote point, maybe with a capitalized uh, P here, that it will still be able to, be to find here uh, the point in the geometry dictionary. If any of these methods here doesn't work, I implemented a couple of error types here. So if there's a key error, that means there was an invalid layer type provided. So the layer type must be obviously either a point, a line, or a polygon. Otherwise, it cannot be found here in the geometry dict. So if it can't be found, key error. Hmm. If there is a type error, uh, sorry, type error, then um, that means that the layer type or the layer name was not a string, which we need. And if there's an attribute error, that means that it could not access the layer. This could happen, for instance, if our shapefile is locked by another program and we said you don't overwrite it maybe. In that case, the, well, if it was open then and we did try to override, then we would have probably already ran in an error here. Finally, here I am then returning the new shape file from the function. So now you can either run this code block here to have the create shape file function available. Um, just again here, uh, the hint if you get an error here from, 
for the from OS Geo Import OGR, make sure you have selected here a uh, kernel uh, that knows the GDAL library. So here I define the Fluss kernel with that um, IPy kernel um, command and I select that one because that is where I installed my GDAL. If you are working with the Fluss tools uh, package and Fluss env environment, then you can also get that create shapefile function directly from uh, Fluss tools. So the way how you would get that is uh, uh, from Fluss tools. Sorry, import. So that's in the dot uh, geo tools folder here. Import create shape file or create SHP. So if you have that installed now, I can run just that here. And you see now it's working, it's importing now from Fluss tools the create shape file function, um, which is basically the same as if you would use just here the run command. So now I rerun that here and I have now that function available rather than the one from Fluss tools. Now here in this code block, I'm making use of that create shape file function and I'm creating here a new shape file that I call new polygons. So I'm giving it a layer name that I call a base map and then I'm calling it, giving it a layer type that is polygon. Afterwards here, I am releasing the data source here by overwriting my new shape file variable with a none type. This is necessary or might be necessary to make sure that now on the other hand, Python is not blocking the shape file if I want to open it in something like QGIS. So now let's run this code block and we will have created a new shape file that we can see here now in the GeoData shapefiles new polygons folder. You may realize here that we have now a database here and .shp and .shx, but there's missing something. I let you guess what that is and come back to you. So what was missing? Correct, the projection file was missing. And we're gonna get there in just a minute. Before, I just want to give you the hint that you may also wanna create a shape file using QJS for instance, to delineate a certain uh, characteristic of a landscape that you have seen somewhere on a map. For getting more instructions on how to create a layer or a new shape file in QJS, uh, please also have a look here at the uh, QJS tutorial. Now let's get to the shape file projections. So the point where we're going to create now that .prj file. Here this code block assumes that you have been running the very first code block of this Jupyter notebook. So that is that one up here. We are uh, creating that shape or shp underscore layer variable. And now here I am inferring here its geospatial reference, which comes from the OGR library. So now let's have a look at how that looks like. This is the geospatial reference of the shapefile that I had and just loaded before. You see here that it is in the, uh, that it uses here uh, WGS84, you see it's spherical. Um, and you see here this uh, it's um, EPSG code for the datum. Now, the format to which that corresponds is the well-known text format. You have already seen this WK format, uh, these WK letters before here in that example where I was uh, either creating here a point a line or a polygon, so this WK here also 
refers to well-known like here. So these authority codes that you see here are EPSG numbers that define the spatial reference of the shape of the shape file. You can get these numbers here and their characteristics on the website uh, spatialreference.org. Um, I observed that it was sometimes down the last month, so um, I hope it's online when you're uh, clicking on it. Now let's write a function to get the uh, well-known text format for a projection file as a function of an EPSG code that we are using maybe uh, for our particular project. I uh, provide here with, uh, provide here with uh, several options. One is here to get or to retrieve the uh, well-known text um, with the URL lib uh, package, but I will jump over that here and directly go to another block here where I provide you with an offline version. So that here requires an internet connection to retrieve the, the EPSG number from the uh, spatial reference.org website that might be down sometimes. Hmm? So in this function here that I called get the well-known text of uh, EPSG number and I'm using here the WKT format, S3WKT. The very first line here defines the default uh, well-known text that the function returns if it doesn't get anything. If that is a good idea or not, up to you can change that. Um, and then here the second line of that function will instantiate a, an OSR spatial reference. So it imports here OSR from OSGeo and instantiates a spatial reference. Then it uses this spatial reference object to import the uh, spatial references here as a function of the EPSG number that you provided to the function. So recall the EPSG number is an integer of four to five digits. If that is not the case, then the function will jump here into a type error or an exception error. In this conditional statement here, which is by default activated, I am morphing or converting that um, special reference here to S3. This is also a good option then here to create, a, let's say, a little bit prettier when on text format um, with, this, uh, uh, with this function here from the special references. So export to pretty well-known text makes that your well-known text format is not just one line, but resembles to something like that here. So you can again run this code block here to get the well-known text function working with your code, or you just import it from FlussTools. So that's again from FlussTools.geotools import for get underscore WKT. How to use that function now? Well, I'm going to get there in a couple of minutes. I will use that get well known text function for the reprojection or the geo transformation of a shapefile. So for instance, you might have a shapefile that is an EPSG 4326, so that's something that you could create maybe with a base map in QJS, and you want to reproject it to EPSG 3857, which is m something that you could use with a web application. Both um, projections or EPSG codes here have a similar precision of, I believe, something like two meters, so nothing for high precision analysis, but it does a job for our purpose here. I will use here a data set from the Natural Earth Quick Start Kit. So you can just uh, click here on that link to download it and 
that will include something like a country's um, shapefile. So I downloaded it already here. It might take a while for you because it's something like 200 megabytes. Um, I cannot provide it directly in the course repository because it's not mine. Huh? Uh, so now uh, what I will do here, I um, go here to the 110 meters cultural folder in the Natural Earth Quick Start uh, data set, so 110 meters cultural. Huh? Then uh, there is a shapefile that is called ne underscore 110 meters underscore admin uh, underscore zero underscore countries. That's it. So I was confusing a point here, the boundaries, uh, but I will use here the countries. So I'm going to highlight here the um, dbf.prj, shp, and shx. The f.cpg file is not strictly necessary. Then I am just extracting these files here to my um, a geodata shapefiles folder and now I'm just renaming then uh, them to countries so that's how I have now here my countries shapefile in um, my uh, my shapefiles folder good so with that I have uh, the shapefile that I want to geotransform and what I will do now as a very first step here is I will examine this shapefile. For this purpose, I will, uh, and I will instantiate here an OSR spatial reference object in which I will use the spatial reference of the shapefile. I will go now directly here to the code block that you find below uh, the workflow. Um, so that eases a little bit the use of use of command uh, of commands. If you prefer having a workflow as bullet lists, then you can also just follow here the bullet items. Good. So here I'm first opening my input shapefile, then I'm getting the input shapefile layer, something like as before, and then I'm getting here the uh, spatial reference from that layer. Now I am identifying the uh, EPSG number of the shapefile with the dot auto identify EPSG function. Now I'm assigning the input spatial reference um, with the authority code that I just identified and this fun um, function here requires one non-argument. Now I am creating a spatial reference for the new shapefile, so the reprojected shapefile. And here I want to use now the EPSG number for web applications, which is then 3857. I will then establish a coordinate transformation with the OSR.coordinate transformation class that takes the input spatial reference and the output spatial reference. Now I will create a new shapefile that will be my reprojected shapefile. So I will call that countries minus web.shp. I'm providing it here with the, uh, with the layer name base map and the layer type line. So this line here makes use of the create shapefile function that we either defined above or you imported from plus tools. Now I am getting the layer here from the output shape file too. So we could say, okay, now we have a new shape file with just a new projection and we just put, uh, we, we, we just rewrite the projection file, easy. It's not exactly that easy because we need to take all features that are in the existing shapefile and reproject them. So the way how we do that is first to look up the features or the feature definitions in the input shapefile that works with this line here. Then I am copying the names of the 
input layer attribute table. So remember, every shapefile has an attribute uh, uh, an attribute table, and here I'm copying the attribute table layer uh, names to the output layer with this block. Now I'm instantiating the feature definitions also in the output layer with this line here. And now I will append all features from the input shapefile and in the reprojected new shapefile. So for this purpose, I will use here an in feature variable and I will instantiate that as an object or the get next feature um, iteration here. So while I'm using a while loop because it's an iterator and while there are still features that are not transformed, this loop will go on. The first thing that this loop does is to get the uh, geometry reference of the feature that I want to transform. Then I am applying the coordinate transformation to that feature. So the coordinate transformation is what I got here. Now I am creating here the new output feature, which uses the output shapefile layer definition, so the one from here. Then I am setting the geometry in the output feature and I'm copying the field values for that feature to the, uh, to the new shapefiles, so, the, so to the reprojected shapefiles attribute table. Then I'm adding the feature to the shapefile, so I'm replacing on the shapefile, and I'm going here to the next iteration step. So if the there is no next feature, that while loop will end. Before I end that code block here, I need to overwrite um, my variables here with none values if I want to use or open my shapefile otherwise. Okay, now we have created a new shapefile and we have reprojected the features. Still, you remember from the first code that we created the shapefile, we only created a .dbf file, shp and .shx file. This will not yet have created the projection file. So that is where we use now the get well-known text function from above to create a projection file for EPSG 3857. So let's run this code block. Takes a while, but here it is. We have now our countries dot web, uh, sorry, minus web file. So to verify if the reprojection worked fine, I invite you now to open QJS, import the countries shapefile and then the countries minus web shapefile and check if everything is as you thought. Well, I hope the countries minus web shapefile looks like you thought it looked like. And here are still now two more items for the reprojection. One is I invite you to try to convert this code block here to a reproject function. I will not hide from you that I implemented a reproject function already in Fluss Tools. So if you want to cheat a little bit and um, get some guidance on how you can convert that into functions, I invite you also to have a look then at the reproject functions in flusstools.geotools. In this code block here, I use the input uh, special reference dot auto identify EPSG function. That returns a zero if it worked. But so sometimes that will not work if I'm not using a popular EPSG number like the 4326 that I used here. In that case, you might need to use a little workaround and this would be here the special reference system dot find matches uh, method. So that uses a larger database on the way how you, how you could use that is um, here matches equals SRS uh, dot find matches. I provided here a little code block with that you could use to um, to run that uh, function here 
um, you will get probably also here that little uh, uh, warning here because I'm writing uh, here is not code style uh, issue um, works the same thing. Good, but what I'm doing here is I'm defining first my EPSG 3857. I'm instantiating its spatial reference and I'm importing it as again, again as before. Now here I'm verifying just that the auto identification with the EPSG worked. And if it did not work, then I am trying to get an accurate match for the EPSG number. If you're working with something like uh, a match of an EPSG number, so that workaround, you probably want to double check if the reprojection worked correctly in QGIS. Okay, so far you have seen how you can load an existing shapefile, reproject or geotransform an existing shapefile, and I have also shown you how to create a new shapefile, though without any contents. Let's have a look at how you can add some contents in the form of features to your shapefile. For this workflow here, I will make use again of the create underscore shape. Uh, meaning shp function and the above introduced get well known text function. So you may either want to follow here the workflow or follow me directly here to the code block. In that code block here I am first uh, creating here or assigning the directory and the name of the shapefile that I want to create. So here I want to create a shapefiles that I call rivers.shp and I will make it a point shapefile um, where well you would expect now river is maybe not a point but I, would, what I want actually here to do is to add names to um, rivers. Then I am opening here I am creating already now here my uh, projection file um, and you see here that it doesn't matter if I create the projection file for that shapefile at the very beginning or at the end. What is important is that at the end of the code there is a projection file that has this well-known text uh, code of the projection information. Here I then uh, create uh, the base map layer. I'm retrieving the base map layer. Then I'm adding here the string field river name to the shapefile. So that's all a li little bit similar to what you do in QJS by clicking around. Um, but instead of clicking around, you can also just use these lines of code here. Um, that requires, of course, that you know where exactly you want to add things here in your shapefile. Here in this uh, shapefile example, I will add the names of rivers that you can find at these coordinates here in EPSG 3857. So the first one is the Aare in Switzerland, the second one is the Ain in France, France, and the third one is the Inn in Germany, which is also flowing through other countries, um, but this point here is in Germany. Or the Austro-German border. border. Well, <laughs> we'll not get into details here. Um, now I'm adding these three river name points to the base map layer as features. And the way how I'm doing that here is that I'm looping on the features that I defined here as a function of coordinates. So I am looping here on the keys of the dictionary to first create a child of the layer. So that I'm doing here with the OGR.feature class. So I'm defining here a new feature. Then I'm setting the field name for the river name. That here is the key, of course. Then I'm using here the WKT, so the well-known text format, to add a point geometry to the feature. So that happens with this little function here. And I'm adding here as floats the coordinates. So the x, y coordinates 
on the coordinate system if you want. Now I'm creating the geometry from well-known text format and I'm setting the new geometry here to the feature. Finally, I'm creating that feature here in the new layer. After looping on every element that I want to add to the shapefile, I will release again the layer and the shapefile so that I can work with that. The result of that code block here, so let's run it, can also be seen then in QJS. And this is how it looks like. You see here if the R, the R and uh, the in. Um, I'm using here as a base map um, a digital elevation model from again the Network Earth a quick start data kit and you see the boundaries of countries over here too. So while I was talking here uh, the code ran successfully and um, note here again that these lines here was were what was creating the projection files and the other lines were creating here the database, the shape file and the, and the .shp and the .shx files. Okay, now let's also create a line file with some contents. We can use again here the create shapefile function by defining our layer type line. I will walk you through the workflow for adding features to a line shapefile here um, with this code block. First, I will create a new, uh, I will um, assign a new name for the shapefile. I will call that the Rhine proxy. Rhine proxy because this is going to be a rough approximation of the Rhine River at the uh, French German border. Then I will create this shapefile here. I will assign again the base map layer name. You can use something else if you want. Um, and I'm using here now as layer type line. I'm again creating here a projection file with the uh, 3857 projection. And now I am getting here, retrieving here that base map layer as before. In, I will use here again now points similar as before for drawing the lines in the next step. What will be important here is the order of the dictionary. So I'm going here from upstream to downstream direction at the, at the Rhine. So these are just some major cities from uh, uh, Basel in Switzerland then to Strasbourg in uh, France. Then I'm creating here the line objects from these points. And the way how I'm doing is uh, this is that I'm looping on the values in the station names. So I'm adding points here to the line, starting with um, the point of uh, Basel, going to Kems, Breiser, Rhino, and uh, Rhino, and uh, Strasbourg. And again, here the order is important. If I put, um, if I would exchange here Strasbourg and Basel, I would probably create some zigzag. Well, not probably, I would definitely create zigzag. Now I am adding here to the shapefile a uh, name, a field name in the attribute table. Though, so that's similar to what you've seen already for the point shapefile. Here I will define the field name river. And now I'm creating the field here with the field name river. Because I have just one line here in that code example, I will not need to loop here on the number of lines I'm adding. I will just create a one line feature, use the ogr.feature function, uh, sorry, feature class to create a new feature with a get layer definition. So that's a line, uh, line type layer. Mm -hmm. Then I'm setting here the line geometry and I'm setting here for the field name river, Rhine, because I want to use the Rhine. Huh? Now I'm adding here the line feature again to the shapefile, which is similar to what you have seen for the point shapefile too. And of course, at the end, I need to release my files. You can also 
um, work around these release issues here with the with statement that you've seen in other tutorials on Python here. If you run this code block, it will take again a couple of minutes depending on how fast your computer is. I'm running that here on a virtual machine and I didn't give it too much power. In the end, it's just Windows. Huh? And now you see here the Rhine proxy is created and you see the result of that Rhine proxy here visualized in QJS where I made it a very thick line so that it covers approximately Rhine and I reduced its opacity a little bit. Now we have added a point feature or multiple point features to a point shape file and a line feature to a line shape file. So let's add also a polygon to a polygon shape file. The way how I will do that, I will use from the OGR library the WKB linear ring class and I will delineate um, the hydraulic lab of the University of Stuttgart. So that's why I called here VA like Versuchsanstalt uh, and Wasserbau like hydraulic engineering. In this code block, I am again first assigning a name for the shape file. Now the difference only for the creation is that I'm using as a layer type a polygon. Then I'm creating a projection as before. This time I'm using 4326 for EPSG number. And then I'm um, retrieving here the layer. So from here on now, everything is a little bit different. For creating the polygon points, I first create here a points uh, instance of the geometry class um, where I'm using the OGR.WKB linear ring class as an input argument. Then I'm adding to that ring four points. Now I am creating a polygon geometry with these four points. For this purpose, I'm again first instantiating here a geometry that is then OGRWKB polygon. And now I'm adding the points to that geometry. And also here, the order of the drawing or adding the points matters. Now I'm adding a field to the, uh, to the shape file that I want to create. Um, again, so that is a little bit similar to what you've seen for point and line shape files. So the mailing here just now the field definition building and I'm creating the field. Now I am creating just one polygon feature. So as before for the line shape file, I do not loop here on the number of features because I have only one. So if you have multiple polygons, you want to loop here probably. The way I'm doing that, I'm first again getting the layer definitions, then I'm instantiating a feature with the layer definition, and then I'm setting the geometry of my polygon. And for that new polyline feature, then I'm uh, sorry, polygon feature, I'm then setting for the field building the name Versuchsanstalt VA. Now I'm creating again that feature in the layer and I'm releasing the file names. So running that will have created the shape file uh, VA for Wasserbau. Here it is. If you downloaded data from somewhere in the internet, you might have downloaded then in some other format than shapefile. So that could be, for instance, a JSON file, like I did here from the German authorities for the inundation area of a small river in southwest Germany. This JSON file here, if you want to get it for running the next code block, um, you can either click here on the link to download it, or if you are working with the um, course repository, you will find that here in the geodata uh, folder, and there is the JSON folder, and here lives that JSON file. 
Now for uh, working with that file here, I will import it as a pandas data frame. So if you have not pandas in your basic imports, you probably want to add here um, import pandas as pd so that this code line here can work. Then I'm creating again a shape file here that I'm giving a polygon uh, layer type and I'm creating again a projection file for the shape file just that I'm using this time the EPSG number 2583 which is a little bit more precise. I'm retrieving then again the base map layer that I defined before and I'm adding now two fields that I want to retrieve from the JSON file. So one is the TBG name which is an OFT string and the other one is the area which is going to be an OGR OFT real. And I will calculate the area with the polygon get, uh, dot get area function. So I add here both fields to the layer and then I'm looping on the entries in the JSON file where I'm using here the alias of WKT for the entry in dry and dry zone inundation of WKT ge geometry. So that's the well-known text geometry column of the pandas data frame and I'm using TBG for the TBG name column in the pandas data frame. Then I will add the feature in every loop here as a child of the layer. Then I'm adding here the TBG name as a function of the, um, of the TBG variable and then I am adding here a polygon, polygon geometry for every feature that is in the um, well-known text geometry column. Then I'm setting here the field area as the area of the polygon and I'm calculating it here with the polygon.getArea function as I just mentioned before. Now I am still setting here the geometry again and I will create the feature again in the layer. After running through this loop, I will um, release the layer and the file again so that I can access it, for instance, if I want to read it with QJS. So running that file will now create a shapefile in the geodata shapefiles directory and you will find here the shapefile on drysum underscore hq100 um, just a second a couple of seconds ago created. You can also use a geo, a geo JSON data to create a, um, uh, to create a geometry um, and I define that here and as just for a hint in that code block. What I find more interesting still here now is that you also have the options to calculate other geometry attributes than just the polygon.getArea function. So you could run, for instance, the unification of multiple polygons, so merging polygons into one polygon. So if polygon A and polygon B are instances of the OGR create geometry from WKT class, um, then you can use polygon A dot union polygon B, which is would then, then be the union of both polygons. In this case, it doesn't matter if you're using polygon B and then union polygon A or vice versa. Uh, you can also intersect two polygons with polygon A dot intersection of polygon to B. I'll create the envelope of two polygons. You can also create a convex hull of, uh, of uh, multiple geometries. So convex hull is something like the enveloped surface of all the features you provide here to that function with all polygons.convex hull. You can also calculate the length of a line. So that will be very useful if you have, for instance, here as well on text form here that line string, and then uh, you can test the line, length of that line here with that command. The area of polygon, you have already seen that here, here, and I also added here a link 
for your um, for an example of for calculating the centroid of coordinates of polygons. Now you can export vector data not only to shape files but also to other formats like GeoJSON or KML. For a general guide to export to other formats, I recommend uh, you having a look here at Michael Diener's Python Geospatial Analysis cookbook. Uh, cookbook. So that is a link to his GitHub repository um, that contains many, many detailed examples and instructions. Here I will just show you now the conversion or the creation of a GeoJSON file, which works a little bit similar first here for creating a triangle geometry. So I'm creating here a polygon in the form of a triangle. So that's an OGR.geometry, a little bit similar to what you've seen before. I'm adding now the, geome uh, uh, the geometry um, to the polygon. And then uh, to write the GeoJSON file, I simply write here, um, uh, I simply use here the um, with a statement to open this file as GeoJSON and then um, GeoJSON.write and then polygon export to GeoJSON is the function that will export the GeoJSON uh, file. If you want to work a little bit more in depth with GeoJSON files, um, you want to check out the GeoJSON driver from the OGR library. Um, and then create again a spatial reference, um, create a GeoJSON file, then you can also retrieve its layer definitions, create a new feature, add a new polygon, and uh, add that then to the new layer and finally release it. So that is then similar to what you've also seen in the shape files before. Now for creating a KML file, so a keyhole markup language file that you could import, for example, in Google Earth. It's basically first the same procedure as I've shown before for um, creating a GeoJSON file where I used this little triangle. Then I used here uh, just instead of uh, just instead of writing now, uh, writing now here the export to a GeoJSON function, I'm using now export to KML. Also for KML files, you can um, do more intensive editing with uh, checking out the KML driver and then OGR.get driver by name um, and then uh, using here the uh, KML file as capital letters. Maybe still here the hint that you sometimes find also KMZ files for um, working with Google Earth, Earth. So this would be uh, zipped KML files that Google Earth also needs uh, knows to interpret um, and are just a little bit smaller uh, than if it were sim singular KML files. So similar to what would be a zip file uh, with other data files. So. That's it for this theoretical tutorial on creating shapefiles. If you want to familiarize a little bit more with this topic, I invite you to have a look here at the Geospatial Eco Hydraulics exercise. Thanks for watching this video.